Welcome back to a new episode here in Swabi. In today's video, we are going to we are going to talk or we or am, I'm going to show you five video effects that you can use either on your music videos or any video that you want pretty much actually. Um, yeah, they're pretty simple effect as you might have seen already in the demonstration at the beginning of the video. So let's just get started right away with the first one. Number one. So this video is sort of like a glow transition, but it uses the elements from the actual image that you have and you can select those elements and it's actually pretty simple to use. You can either use an adjustment layer, these from here, from the gen uh, from the effects here, you can use an adjustment layer or the way that I did it was I compounded these two clips and the reason behind it is that I for some reason it it rendered better or it pre-rendered better when I was working it with a compound clip. Okay, so let's, let me just show you right away what I did for these. And it's not that complicated. It will literally just animate the opacity and play around with this part here. So the first step is we're gonna go here in between our two clips and we're gonna press M. So we create a marker and then we're gonna select both of them and we're gonna create a new compound clip. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our effects library here and then in open effects, we're going to look for the glow effect, which is, oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere around here, right here. It was in the first tab. Huh. All right. And then we're going to add it to our clip right here to our compound clip. And then we're going to go up here. That's what's going to open up once, once you add it. And then here you can play with this and the here the shine threshold is what's gonna allow us to be as uh more bright i guess when you're at, at the brightest point but I, I chose to leave this one sort of lower so it becomes a little bit um more bright when we are doing the transition and then we can play around with this part and i also changed this to the highest setting i think yeah Okay, so then that was that's what it will look like right in the middle of the animation. If you want to add some color to it, you can also play around and add color to your brightness or to your glow effect by pressing any of these sections right here. So let's press, press red. So it's gonna select sort of select all the red portions of the image, and then this is gonna be the br most bright point. So we can make sure that we make sure that all of this is not messing the thing up because you want it to be really bright so you want to choose white or the closest to white that's going to make it the most shiny all right so let's get right into it so for the first keyframe right in the middle where our marker is we're going to create a keyframe here and then we're going to go we can go the quicker you want it to be the less frames you're going to go so for the sake of this part we're going to go um we're going to go 10 frames one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Let's go and we're gonna create a new keyframe there and that one's gonna be in zero and then we're gonna go back here to our middle one we're gonna go 10 more frames one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten yeah that is two here is ten frames um anyways all right let's get it right there so then that's basically how it's gonna look like and right now it looks like that because it's not rendered and for rendering it you're gonna go here and you're gonna press glow i'm not gonna render this for the sake of this video right now because i'm recording and i don't want to mess the recording part right now with resources being used there all right anyways let's get right into the second um effect that we have it's sort of like double exposure i guess you could say um but basically what we're doing is we're adding another video on top and we can play around with the blending modes um, to make it look a certain way. So we're gonna just copy these two right here. So and then so we're gonna. I'm just gonna copy these two out here, and I'm gonna set it as if as it will look like if there was no effects added to it. So normally, when you add a new video, it's gonna look like that. So what you wanna do is you're gonna go here and in the blending mode you can play around with these different ones 
and it's gonna look and then you're gonna it's gonna look pretty weird like that but you can also add the opacity sections to um sort of like balance it out i guess and you can choose different the different methods and different modes i'm sorry and the method the mode that i use was i think it was darker color and that sort of like chooses the darker colors or replaces the it leaves the colors the darker colors intact on the original image and so you can see that right here you see how the darker colors of this dancing image are left untouched so we're gonna place it at 40 percent around and that's what's gonna add that effect but in order to make it a little bit more clean what i did was i went up here and in these two arrows you just drag them and it's going to add a fade in and fade out effect. So then it slowly fades in and shows up in this in on top of the video or behind it, I guess you could say sort of. And yeah, and that's how you add that second effect, which I guess you could call global exposure effect. All right, let's go right into the third one that I sort of stumbled on it sort of by mistake, I guess. And this one requires us to go into fusion, but it's not that complicated. So bear with me. So as you've seen it, it's sort of like a trippy zoom out, I guess you could say effect. And let me just show you how it looks at the beginning. It's actually really simple. It's actually just a one duplicate node and that is pretty much it. So let me just go ahead into this clip and I'm going to show you how it's done. So right here, when we go to our clip, let's get the media pool out of here. We're gonna go and select a duplicate note. I'm gonna add it to here. And then we're gonna press here uh, for copies. And then you can also play around with the different blending modes. And what I did was, I think I used the lighten blending mode if I'm not wrong. And then when you increase the X size zoom, it's gonna add that cool weird effect that we had. And the more copies you have, the more resource intensive it will be. So be careful with that. Okay, so I don't think it was the lighting mode that we used, but you can test different modes here and they will all have different um, effects. And yeah, you can play around with it and it looks really, and you can find really cool effects here. You see overlay looks really different again, soft light, hard light, uh, the color dodge is gonna add a lot more luminosity, color burn is gonna add a lot more darkness and then hue it adds different hue sections there changes them the exclusion it takes out colors difference it adds even more craziness in it right so yeah you can play around with these and then see whatever you find that you like the most in this so for here in this demo i guess you could say i'm gonna show you and i'm gonna show you the animation for this was also pretty simple all that i did was I create a keyframe for the X size. And one thing I forgot was I also increased the, I put the offset a couple, I think it was like minus 25 maybe, just to sell the effect a little bit more. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna create a keyframe for our X size. And then we're gonna go here. And if we put plus 10, it's gonna take us 10 frames forward. And then we can go here again and put plus 10. That's gonna take us 10 more frames forward. So it's a little quicker sometimes, right? Okay, so then right here, we have these two right at the default mode, I guess. And then here, we're gonna increase the size. You don't have to go all the way huge. You can go as just like that too. It depends on what you want. And it adds that trippy effect to it it's pretty cool I, I think and then you can also play around here with the spline tool and there before what i did too was i went here into the keyframe portion and i selected these first place so we can go where it is Oops. there and holding control we're gonna copy these a couple of times three times to be exact and I'm going to show you three ways three alternative forms I guess you could say so all of these are the same right now so this one we're going to leave it as is 
on this one we're gonna press t and we're gonna ease in and take it all the way out and on this one we're gonna press t again and we're gonna change the ease out section so now you're gonna see how each of those um look different in their own way because it changes the speed in which the animation sort of like starts and ends yeah so it's a little cool effect that i thought i'll i stumbled upon it and i thought it was looking cool too and it could be awesome for some video effects and stuff like that uh and yeah that's pretty much it for this number three um all right so let's get back let's get to the fourth effect this video is um i guess you could call it sort of like a ghost effect i guess as you've seen it before and it's actually pretty simple and it's not that complicated to do and the color part you don't have to add it i just add it to it um but you can leave it as it, as it is too i'm gonna show you what the color portion was too so the first step is we're gonna copy our clip here and it's easier if you have this magnet activated so it's gonna attach right on top of it and what you want to do is you're gonna go let's say one two three four five frames and move this one there and then we're gonna go five more frames one two three four five and we're gonna add these frames and that's gonna add sort of like that weird delay effect and then we're gonna change the opacity set here to about 50 percent should work fine to both on both of those and then that is pretty much gonna that is going to add that effect but it's sort of like um starting a little bit too quick i guess you could say or it's a little bit too sharp the way it starts right and right now it's also trying to process it so it looks pretty crazy so what i did again was i used that fade in portion to sort of like ease them in into the scene and yeah that's sort of how it looks like and then you can just make a hard cut and just cut them out there again and then you leave that out and that is how you break out of this ghost effect i guess you could say and to add the colors to it what i did was i go to the effects here section and then we're gonna search for um where is it the color generator and we're gonna add that vfx there and then that's gonna open up here and then here you can select whatever color you want but with a yellow one you can also animate the colors here if you click here and then go to a different frame and select a different color it's gonna fit it's gonna follow that um color palette sort of thing let me just show you in this one we're gonna go here and change this color again too and yeah so if you click a key from here gonna create a keyframe for the yellow one if you go a couple more uh frames forward and change the color let's say you change it to purple it's gonna sort of like follow these uh change all the way until it gets to that color yeah so then that is a little bit too hard right so we can also play around with the blending mode here to make the color not as um crazy i guess you could say And it fades in also again and then it fades out so yeah that was the ghost effect that was effect number four then for the next final effect it's an even easier effect that you can do and it's just a screen pump a basic screen pump that you can add to i don't know to add a little bit of follow the beats and stuff like that on your video video okay so we're gonna copy these again and let me just show you here and we're gonna get rid of all of these oops not that okay so the way that you do this screen pop effect is basically we're gonna find the place that we want it to be a pump i guess you could say uh and we're gonna create a keyframe for the zoom right here and then we're gonna go one or two frames and we're gonna create a new one then we're gonna go back and create two more two keyframes in this case and then on the center one we're just gonna add that pump effect and that's gonna add and the more the more you increase the middle one the crazier it's gonna be and the sharper it's gonna be right 
And then you can also go here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And if you select the, the middle one and right click, you can press ease in and out. And it's basically going to do what this plan tool does in the fusion tab. And then at the end, there's a couple, there's a section where it does a couple, it, um, it repeats the effect a couple of times. And to do that, first of all, you're going to copy this holding alt and then dragging them. And you can create a new section of it right next to it. And then we're going to do one more. And for the portion where that was happening, what I did was I actually, for the one in the middle, uh, the first one, it was a, a default zoom, I guess you could say. But then for the next one that's in the middle, I actually made it a little bit bigger. So let's see, 310. And then for the third one, I did it even bigger than the one before. So it's sort of like a stairwell, I guess, effect. Yeah, like that. But you got to make sure that you're following the beat of your video or of your music just so the effect uh, works a little bit better. So yeah, those were the five effects uh, here in DaVinci Resolve that you can use. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check the links in the description and all that stuff. Hopefully you like this video and you find it useful. And I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave.